Hey, my friends, welcome back to Embrace the Question. Steve here, and it is time to delve into episode six of season two, entitled Unlawful. We just finished episode five, which was entitled Spirit, and I probably learned more in that one. Just paying attention to everywhere the Spirit was present. The Holy Spirit or an evil spirit, it was definitely aptly named. This one, unlawful. So this will be interesting to pick out. What are we dealing with here? What is unlawful? We know that we are, we're trying to figure out where Mary is going. We, we believe that she's in Jericho. Well, we don't really know why she is in this state of mind. We've talked about it a bit. We've surmised. We think she's just disappointed in herself because she had it. Everything was going well, and then she fell. And those voices just came back. So, let's see what happens. The fever hasn't broken yet. It's five days. He will heal. He always does. And what if our oldest son doesn't heal? Hmm? That is why I must teach a beardar how to make the showbread today. No, our family share in the secret traditions of Aaron's priestly lineage will be damaged yes, otherwise. Yes, Yafa. I'm aware. It's yet one more in a never-ending string of fun curses. You. Always thinking in catastrophes. And you. Always thinking it's another sunny day. Send for the boy. Twelve cakes, one for each of the tribes of Israel. But if the bread is still here, why didn't God eat the Abba? God doesn't need food. It's called the bread of the presence because it's a reminder of his presence in our lives. A symbol that he sits at our table, dwells in our midst. What happens to the old bread? In the law of Moses, it was written that Aaron and his son shall eat it in a holy place since it is for him the most holy portion of Adonai's food offerings, a perpetual do. I always wonder where you on Sabbath went every Shabbat. Yes, we come here to eat the bread that has been removed, provided neither of us had lain with his wife that morning. Don't you leave with him every night, Abba? <laughs> um, that is a discussion for another time. But for now, we must replace this with the hot bread as an offering to Adonai. Reuben. Simeon. Levi. Judah. Shimalek. Abigatar, go home. Tell your mother I sent you and that everything's going to be fine. Listen, I are you alone. Where is your protection? The king has sent me on a mission. It said that no one is to know anything about it. I've arranged to meet my men at a certain place. David, my understanding, you and the king are not on friendly terms. I've been sent on a mission from the king. Please, I haven't eaten in days. And I know my men haven't either. They're in hiding. We could make do with five loaves of bread, anything. I have no ordinary bread. What about that? That was replaced by the hot but bread. It's still holy bread. You know the law, Moses. And I know the peacock, Nefesh. Have the men kept themselves from women? Truly, they have. And always, they've been in hiding at Gebeah, waiting for me for days. You must be quick. So remember, what I'm about to give you is sacred. Life is more sacred than bread. If Zol finds out I helped you, I won't get to keep mine. I know. And I'm not sorry. Something is going to come through you. I can feel it. Something bigger, more exciting. I don't know what. There was nothing bigger or more exciting than that giant. We'll see. All right. A somewhat tense opening. You may not be familiar with that story. That is out of 1 Samuel 21 and 22, the story of David coming to Ahimelech, and his son Abiathar is present, the, the little boy. That was when David was fleeing from Saul, with his men, 
uh, some of his men. He didn't have all of them yet, but he was fleeing from Saul. He was hungry, and he stops by this... I, I always imagined it being a temple. I guess it wasn't a temple. It would not have been the temple. It would have been a place where the priests worked. However, we see that we're in the city of Nob. Um, interesting thing about that. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. But David is hungry. He says, give me some bread. Um, Ahimelech says, all I have is this bread that's dedicated to the priesthood. And it was. It was dedicated to the sons of Aaron. And therefore, it was for the, 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 Levit the Levitical priesthood. Easy for me to say. It was not lawful for the priests to just give that bread to anyone. Ahimelech made sure that David had not lain with his wife. It was out of the past. It was more of the oral tradition. God had commanded them to, to abstain from sexual relations before certain events, that being one of them. However, that didn't make David any more a Levite, right? And we know later that David wears an ephod. Again, a foreshadowing of what Jesus came to institute, which was a kingdom of priests, or kings and priests. David being the first king and a priest. And David was out of the tribe of Judah, not Levi. So what David was doing here was unlawful. He was running from Saul. He was hungry. He needed to feed his men. He took the table, or he took the, the bread of the showbread, uh, the, the, what do you call it, the bread of the presence, uh, because it was on the table of the presence. And um, that wasn't lawful. So we're getting off to a really good start here. He also took, by the way, the sword of Goliath. Uh, that had been stored there for, I guess, since the event. And he made mention nothing was more exciting than that giant. Hmm. Abiathar, uh, no, Ahimelech was right. There were big things in store for David. However, it was kind of the end of the line for uh, Ahimelech because Saul did find out, 1 Samuel 22, Saul did find out and it was bad news for that entire city. But the little boy escapes and runs to David. So that's what you learn. You need to get Get in your Bible and read 1 Samuel 21 and 22. Just catch up on that, okay? Let's see where it goes. I can't imagine, actually, because I have seen this, but I don't recall why that was so relevant. Are you hungry? What did you do to yourself? Oh. 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 That's disgusting. <coughs> did you not put down new hay before lying down? No, did you? Of course I did. My mind is racing. I guess I wasn't paying attention. We split up today. We'll be able to cover more ground. We're not splitting up. It would be more logical. Jesus wants you back in one piece. You said there was breakfast? No. I asked if you were hungry. Do you know how to make eggs? No. Why 
the water, put the eggs in the water. No, 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 no. What is it? Well, I'm not the cook, for starters, neither am I. But we must sustain ourselves. While you make eggs however you like them, you can also devise our plan for the day with me. Fine. You know, we may have to consider the possibility that she went somewhere other than Jericho. Ephraim or Bethel? No. Too much wilderness to cross between camp and either of those places. She's most comfortable in cities. Oh, you think she's still here? I do. We must analyze her history, what she normally does. Lately, before this, all she did was study Torah with you and Rama. I checked the synagogue. The officials said they hadn't seen her. How did you describe her? How would you? She's got black hair. Long black hair. Oh, well, all our women have long. Sometimes she can't even cover it all. She might be inconsolable or distressed. Anything else? Unusually pleasant to look at? You want to add water to the pot before it heats up. Okay, Matthew. Hey, you all right? Just another night of the nomad. Nomad? I can't believe I made it up the stairs. Dionysus carried me. Whoa, 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 hey. Pause off, rat. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, you gave a description of Mary to the official. What did he say about the stairs? What flowers can you eat? Rose, borage, dandelion. A little tangy, but who's going to complain? How do you know so much about edible flowers? My family has been poor my whole life. So you learn what the earth can give you. But your son is... My son is a homeless nomad who no longer brings in income for carpentry. <laughs> and you're smiling about it. I'm smiling because he is doing what he was born to do. And maybe sometimes that means we will be hungry for a few days. But at least his time has come. If his time has come, why doesn't he just bring Mary back? It doesn't work that way. And how does it work? Sometimes he is as much a mystery to me as he is to you. Poison. We lived in Egypt when Jesus was a boy. One of their gods was called Toth, whom they believed they could compel to grant their wishes if they performed rituals. It's not like that with our God. Why would it be with Jesus? Nothing good can come from Mary disappearing like this. Do you know that? She was already upset about something, even before the possessed man came into camp. Simon and Matthew are competent searchers. They do not like each other. They'll have to work together. She could be dead or dying in a ditch somewhere. Why would Jesus use her pain to unite two men who are annoyed by each other? We do not know that she's in danger. She's a woman alone. She's either in a savage wilderness or a depraved town patrolled by Romans. Prema. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name Adonai, our God. I want to be a teacher like Mary someday. I want to be able to write my thoughts. You will. Not if she doesn't come back. We can't fix anything by worrying about it. Lavender. 
Can you eat lavender? Sometimes I pay attention to the complexity of the dialogue, whether it be simple or, or really, are they using a teleprompter? That was not simple dialogue. That was a pretty, I, I, I'm not an actor, obviously, and I don't script this kind of thing. I don't script my, uh, my sermons. I don't script anything, really. That's why I'm not very good at anything. But these guys are not reading off of a teleprompter. I mean, that's some pretty interesting dialogue to, to just pour your emotion into like they do. Again, just a testament to how good of an actor all of these people are. Uh, poor English. How, how awesome these actors are. But... Have you ever thought about them, Mary, Jesus, that family being kind of like homesteaders? Have you ever thought of them foraging for food like they're doing now? Because Jesus is a homeless nomad that no longer has an income off of carpentry. I suppose that you would have to get pretty creative. And I do know that um, th those that live in or around the wilderness are good at living off the land. The Bedouins, uh, very good at living off the land. They, they, they know secrets about survival. I just never really thought of Jesus and his family needing to be survivalists. But there are elements of truth to that, I'm sure. Because the, communi the community can only do so much. The community can help, but you can't live off of the community unless you're in America. Then you can do that. But I digress. I was going to get back to the city of Nob, and I never did. Nob, interestingly enough, means fruit. So they were making bread in a place of fruit. David runs to a place of fruit to get fed. I find that interesting, and I love biblical pictures. I'm writing another book, and it, it's kind of like, uh, well, it's, it's about the spirit of Jezebel. And you'll remember in that story, a man had a vineyard and his name was Naboth. Well, Naboth is the plural of fruit. Nob, pluralized, is Neb Nabot, or Naboth. And so, I caught that. And now I'm looking at all of the applications of why bread in a place of fruit and, and certainly, uh, a man came the next day and destroyed everything, destroyed the fruit. And that is very, that is very Baal. That is very Jezebel. Again, not so much to do with the chosen, but has everything to do with this intro, which I'm still trying to figure out where this applies. So we're going to keep watching and find out the relevance of that intro. Nine for sure. Nine is too much. I came in here with a single shekel to my name, and now look at this pile, huh? And how did you get the first one, woman? Hmm? What did you do for it? Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, are we going to play or what? Get on with it. Hey. Watch and learn, boys. Watch and learn. Hey! Ah, mother of a dog! First time over, yeah? Another. Another. Ah, no sweeps on twos. That's a loose rule. Well, we're playing by. We're not playing, we are done. Hey, you can't do that. I'm going to win my money back. Yeah, when? Now. I see. Roger's just slow playing us, everyone. He's actually a lion. <laughs> 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 
You want to win your money back? Seriously? Mm-hmm. It'll be behind the bar. Another. <laughs> A woman should know her place. I suppose you're going to show me? such a good actor. That's a creepy scene. I mean, for a minute there, you get excited and you're thinking, well, she's going to win a bunch of money. She's going to take it back to Jesus and they're going to have money for her. That's how I think. And then she ends up getting scared and she leaves the money that she won. I don't even know what I think about that. I'm glad she's out of the room. What do, you, what do you make of that scene? What did we just watch? She's still wrestling. She's scared because she has the flashback. But she's having trouble with the prayers. She's having trouble getting into repentance mode. That's what it is. She doesn't want to go back to the prayers yet. Hmm. That's interesting. 16. 17. 18. 19. 19 servings. And there's 15 of us? 14. If Philip doesn't make it back to you. That's true. And 11 if... Matthew and Simon don't find Mary. It's only a day's walk to Jerusalem. If Philip, Matthew, Simon, and Mary don't come back, we can split the remaining eight servings, but someone would still be left out. And what if the others do come back? We'll have nothing for Maybe them. Maybe Philip stayed an extra day to visit his brother Micah. Why are you so troubled about Philip? This... This is literally our last meal. These lentils. We don't even have half a bait of... of Flour or yeast. Hey man, Mary might find berries. He can make people walk. He can heal lepers. Why can't he make food appear out of thin air? When I was with John, sometimes we would go for days without food. Other times, the person he baptized would give us money. We would eat like kings for the day. It doesn't sound like much of a planner. We never thought about it. John doesn't believe in money. Doesn't believe in it? Are, are you seeing this? He says it's a man-made construct designed to assign value and take ownership of things that belong to God. <laughs> Sounds like the guy needs an accountant. Maybe we should send Matthew to him. But I know isn't the best time for jokes. Okay. I once thought about joining the Zealots. What? You never told me that. You never asked. So? Why didn't you? This very thing. We have enough rules from Torah to follow as it is. 613. 613. All these prayers we have to recite, all these things we can and cannot do, add a bunch of body exercises to that each morning? They have to be in prime shape, you know? Mm, to kill people. Yes. But rolling out of bed each morning to Ima's breakfast, mm -hmm. going out on the boat with Ava, <laughs> seemed pretty great when I thought about it. But now that he's with us, he's technically not a zealot anymore, right? I have this theory that for some people, like, like little James and Thaddeus over there, 
Uh. They're called to follow our rabbi, and they just somehow know it is a better path than the one that they are on. And then there's him. Mm-hmm. Decades of training for one thing, it cannot just go away overnight. I'm more worried about Simon than him. <laughs> and we've had our moments too. Ah, yeah, sons of thunder. <laughs> I, what is Ima going to think? I don't know, maybe she'll be glad we got the title. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how Mary's doing. I just don't understand why Jesus would pair up Simon and Matthew to go and find her. Matthew, it's like asking a, a fox and a fish to go and team up and do something productive. What? Because they could never work together. It's the same. Nobody says that. Anyway. I actually don't understand most of this. Just pieces here and there when good things happen, but the rest, I'm just following. I have a sinking feeling. It's going to take a long time to understand. For us? For everyone. That was pretty cool. Just, I like... I like Big James. I like the honesty. He's an honest character. And to be honest, as he says, to be honest, I really don't understand any of this. I'm just following. I'm just following. That should be a little bit comforting, I think, to most Christians, because I think a lot of us are just following. We don't really see the big picture, although some see a bigger picture than others. Think about this. In Ephesians, it says that you are seated in the heavenlies with Christ. If you are in Christ, you are seated with him in the heavenlies right now, which means that your pers- you have access to a higher perspective. It's available. It may not be easy to obtain, but it is available. Perhaps there's a bit of praying involved. Perhaps some meditation. Perhaps getting in the Word, trying to figure out what the overall plan is. But there is a higher perspective available to those in Christ. Big James, man, I just like it because the honesty is real. And and really, they do seem like brothers, don't they? Again, a good pairing of, of people. Also, the conversation between uh, Andrew and, uh, and Thomas. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that. The, Thomas is always calculating, just like Matthew. Only he has this disdain for Matthew. <laughs> and they're basically the same, only slight, slight differences. And Andrew's just dry. He's dry. He's like, this is no time for jokes. And he's the joke cracker. I mean, he's the one that can crack one without... He'd be a great pastor. He's the one that can throw a joke out there and, and never crack a smile. Yeah, it's just the inner workings of the group that we're seeing here. Why did Jesus pair up Simon and, and Matthew? Obviously, getting Mary back in one piece isn't one of his big priorities, right? That seems to be the consensus. So, nobody understands. Nobody understands what's going on. Everybody's got the same questions. We don't know what's going on. I know places like this. I make my bed deep in the depths. I'm cured here. Stay behind me. Wow, 
Round four, shoot. Round four, shoot. Place your defense. Keep it civil over there, Hebrew dogs. She was the end. Excuse me. Have you seen a woman with long, dark hair? She, she may be distraught. Are you friends of Lilith? No. It sounds like Lilith. That witch took me for everything I have at Knucklebones. It's Mary. You know where she is now? We can't have gone too far. We'll cover more ground if we split. We're not doing that. We can meet at the stables. Didn't you learn anything in there? Mary can obviously take care of herself. You can't. What if you were cut off from Jesus by something in your past? Wouldn't you want help getting back to him as soon as possible? Okay. We split up. North, east, south, west. Huh? I go north. Boys? Mary! I thought I was dreaming you. Can you walk? I'm not going anywhere. We have to go back. No, I can't. Come on, Mary. He told us to come for no. you. No. <laughs> no. He already fixed me once. And I broke again. I can't face him. Bad person, Mary. I fear. No. My whole life, all through me. No faith. I do have faith in him. Just not in me. I'm learning more about Torah and God because of you. Studying harder because you are such a great student. <laughs> Remember when we were at Zebedee's and they lowered that man after breaking Zeb's roof? <laughs> <laughs> we did that together and they got to meet Jesus because of your care for them and your good ideas. Rama is beginning to read and write because of you. He saved you to do all these things. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Where is your handkerchief? Can you get some water, please? some water so man that is so good now we see the genius of the divinity of Jesus Jesus sending Matthew sending Simon together perhaps he knew that only Matthew would have the words and I really liked what Ma what Mary said I have faith in him I just don't have faith in me. And that's, that's so true. You remember the place. I don't know if we get to see that in this. I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get to see at some point the walking on the water. 
because that should st still, I think, be in front of us. But that that's what that whole story is about. Simon asking, is it, Rabbi, if that's you, call me out of the boat. Jesus says, okay, Simon, come. Simon gets out of the boat, middle of a storm, waves, wind, darkness, scary. Simon's walking on the water. And then he starts paying, paying attention to his circumstances, his surrounding, the storm, everything except Jesus. And he begins to sink. And Jesus catches him and says, Oh, you little faith. That's the Greek. Oh, you little faith. Who did Simon have little faith in? And forever we were taught, well, he just didn't have enough faith in Jesus. Truth is, Jesus wasn't sinking. Simon had plenty of faith in Jesus. Simon had no faith in himself. And what we learn from the story is that Jesus has faith in us. Perhaps doesn't help Mary to know that because she feels like she's betrayed that faith. But at the same time, we know something awesome is still in front of us. We see something cool from Levi, from, from Matthew, who is all of a sudden not running from something that would make normally make him throw up. He's holding her hair while she throws up. Something so un-Matthew-like. That's beautifully written. That is just a pretty script. That had to be something that they read and said, Wow, we get to act that? Yeah. Awesome. Well, here's the truth of it. I am out of time. I have to jet. So, I'm going to have to wrap up this video. We're at the halfway point. It's a, it's a 45 minute video, we're at the 22 minute mark. There's quite a bit of me gabbing in it, so this is going to be a, a regular length video, it looks like around 40-45 minutes. I wanted to do the whole thing, and I just, I'm out of time. So we're going to do the second half yet one more time. And I apologize for those that really don't like that. but. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm going to get this second one done. Look for it this week. This is Thanksgiving week, but look for it this week. And I've got some other stuff piling up. Some of you have bought me coffee, and I want to give you a special thank you, because that means the world. Thank you for the coffee. Um, that <laughs> Also, you know, just thank you for watching these videos. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I sure like watching them, and I sure like reading the commentary that you guys provide. You, you're very, very smart people, and I enjoy the insight that you bring. So keep it up. Keep it up. And if you want to see more of these and haven't subscribed, remember, subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one this week, okay? Peace.